Today we're looking at President Grover Cleveland. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Grover Cleveland was the 22nd president and 24th president of the United States from 1885 to 1889 and then from 1893 to 1897 and was a member of the Democratic Party. Cleveland is currently the only president in U.S. history to serve non-consecutive terms in office. Stephen Grover Cleveland was born March 18, 1837 in Caldwell, New Jersey, the fifth of nine children born to Richard Fowley Cleveland and his wife, Anne. Grover's father, Richard, was a minister. As a child, he went by Stephen, but later in life began to go by his middle name, Grover. In 1841, the Cleveland family moved to Fayetteville, New York, where Grover primarily grew up. He attended school in Fayetteville, but when his father passed away in 1853, Cleveland left school to help support the family. By 1855, he moved to Buffalo, New York, where he took a clerk job in a law office and began to study to become a lawyer. In 1859, he was admitted to the New York State Bar. By 1862, he started his own legal practice and was appointed the assistant district attorney of Erie County, New York. At the same time, the Civil War was going on, and all able-bodied men were required to serve unless they could hire a substitute to serve in their place. Cleveland did hire someone to serve for him instead of going off to war. After the Civil War, Cleveland's law practice continued to grow, as did his influence in Buffalo and across the state of New York. By the early 1870s, he was elected sheriff of Erie County. As sheriff, he was responsible for carrying out sentences for convicted criminals. Cleveland personally executed two convicted murderers by hanging. By 1881, he was elected mayor of the city of Buffalo, and soon after, in 1882, Cleveland was elected the governor of New York State. In 1884, Grover Cleveland was nominated to be the Democratic candidate for president, along with Thomas Hendricks of Indiana, as his running mate. In the general election of 1884, Cleveland defeated Republican James Blaine in the Electoral College 219-182 to 182 by winning New York, along with most of the southern states. Cleveland would be the first Democrat to win the presidency since 1856, before the Civil War. On March 4, 1885, Cleveland was inaugurated as the 22nd President of the United States. During Cleveland's first term in office, he fought to stop the government from giving financial aid to economic groups. He was quoted as saying, Federal aid in such cases encourages the expectation of paternal care on the part of the government and weakens the sturdiness of our national character. He vetoed legislation that gave pensions to Civil War veterans who had suffered disabilities not during military service. He also signed the controversial Interstate Commerce Act, which was the first effort by the government to regulate railroads expanding west. On October 28, 1886, Cleveland opened and dedicated the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor. Additionally, you may have noted that I have not mentioned Cleveland ever getting married. He was actually a bachelor when he was elected president, but that did not last long. On June 2, 1886, he married Frances Folsom, who was only 21 years old while Cleveland was 49. Their wedding was held in the White House, and to this day, Cleveland is the only president to be married in the White House. Furthermore, at only 21 years old, Frances Folsom is the youngest first lady in American history. Grover and Frances would go on to have five children together. In the election of 1888, Cleveland ran against Republican Benjamin Harrison. In the general election, Cleveland won the popular vote, but lost the Electoral College to Harrison 233 to 168. Cleveland returned to private life, moving to New York City and joining a law practice there. But in 1892, Grover Cleveland again was nominated to run on the Democratic ticket for president. In the election, he again faced Harrison and Populist Party candidate James Weaver. This time, Cleveland won both the popular vote and the Electoral College and was inaugurated on March 4, 1893 as the 24th President of the United States. Soon after he took office again, the nation was struck with an economic downturn known as the Panic of 1893. Much of the crisis was brought on by the issue of how the American dollar was backed with gold or silver. Cleveland maintained the gold standard. 
Additionally, the economic downturn had led to labor unrest, with the Pullman strike near Chicago taking center stage as American railroads ground to a halt. Cleveland ordered federal troops to go in and break up the strike. The move was extremely unpopular, and Cleveland established Labor Day as a holiday in an effort to appease workers. In the election of 1896, Republican William McKinley was elected president. Cleveland left the White House and retired to his Westland mansion in Princeton, New Jersey. Some Democrats attempted to convince Cleveland to run for the U.S. Senate, but he never did. Grover Cleveland died of a heart attack on June 24, 1908, at his home in Princeton, New Jersey, at the age of 71. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.